quest for adventure dedicated to people who love the outdoors. Brought to you by the new Ford Expedition, the only way to get there. Bass Pro Shops Catalog. Tracker Marine, fish the finest. Hi, I'm Flip Pallet. My companion is Glen Lau, and the country we're skimming over is in the heart of the Everglades National Park. There are two ways to access the watery reaches of the Everglades backcountry. Through Everglades City at the northwest end of the park, and through another small fishing village that has always been the starting point for my explorations into the park's magic places. A village called Flamingo. This journey will begin at Flamingo and end a week from today at Everglade City. This outing is my chance to introduce Glenn to my backyard. More importantly, to introduce him to the thrill of exploring one of the planet's most beautiful, delicate, and remote wilderness areas. Specifically on my mind is a place that I haven't visited in many years. It's a series of shallow lakes that lie deep in the labyrinth of mangrove islands and watercourses of the backcountry. I used to call them the night heron ponds. And if I can remember how to get there, I know that it's sure to rate high on Glenn's list of outdoor memories. Flip and I came well equipped with our Sun Tracker boat as home base. We would try to penetrate the endless waterways with our backcountry boat. After a long absence from this area of the park, Flip tried to gather his memory and landmarks that might lead us back to the Night Heron Ponds. A dead end that I hadn't counted on. Not a good sign. We'll try another branch. Here I was, starting to learn my old stomping grounds all over again. Passes and mangrove islands seem to have been relocated, as if by some giant's hand. Perhaps the forces of a hurricane named Andrew. I knew him really well. What I love most is the exploration. Somewhere through this seemingly impenetrable maze of islands and ponds is our destination. I could fly us to Venezuela. <laughs> could we, we could get, get lost down there. Could we get back? Yeah, we could buy a round trip ticket. Like a friend of mine says, I've told you a million times not to exaggerate. You know what? This is so grown up with grass, I don't know if we... And this uh, grass that's growing with the with the uh, yellow flower, yeah, is called uh, bladderwort. Bladder. Glenn, lost passage here. I thought this was the way here, but I now I'm not so sure. Stuck.
Boy, I could have sworn this was the way I wanted to go, but I am got to admit to you that I'm a little bit turned around here. I don't know. I think we ought to now maybe go this way. Huh? You're the last person I'm going to listen to here. Of course, hey, you're the fresh, only person here to listen to. We're in fresh water now. Right? I know. It's pretty sweet here. Boy, I am really... The first day came and went without finding the passage that would lead us back to the ponds. However, good fishing could be found about anywhere we stopped. See these bromeliads or air plants on these uh, buttonwoods here? Right, right. These are the signposts that we use to tell us where we are back in this country. They only grow in certain places. So it's this little here, this one right here? Right. The light colored one? Right. It would be like for normal people downtown, it would be a street sign. I'm going to catch a fish right here by that beautiful This airplane. is a good place. There oh, he there is, he a is. snook. Oh, oh, man, you see? <laughs> I can't man, believe you called it that. Down. I'm too excited about that. <laughs> oh, golly. I can't believe you called that. Well, that was amazing, wasn't it? Turned right upside down. <laughs> Glenn, mm. this is this is what I used to do. Just go along every time I saw one of these, catch them, and put them in the in the cooler. Oh, look, coming down the shoreline, there's something coming. Bring it to him. Bring Gotta it to him now. Fish in there. Faster, 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 faster. Oh. <laughs> we get you out from the bushes. That's the same fish. <laughs> oh. That was so good. You said he was going to be right there. Look at this. That's a little battler, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Be careful of those of those real sharp gill rakes. Yeah. You know about that, right? Yeah, I know about that. Be real careful. I don't want to have to sew you up. I know about that. Good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> It's fun when you see a fish hit your lure and then go back and catch it. I wonder if I could throw him in, throw him back and release him and catch him again. Well, catch his dad. People have never seen a snook. I think would be amazed at the beautiful silver color on their side like that. As we go through these uh, little tunnels and along these edges, Glenn, be very careful never to touch. See these two little trees right in front of you? Right here? Yeah, those two trees right there. That's poison wood or manchineel. Yeah. It will light you up with the worst rash. It'll make you glad to have poison ivy. What's, what's this down here? It looks like rope. Or... Yeah, that's okay. You can touch. That's cocoa plum. That's cocoa plum. And then... Just as you come around there, look on your left there, you'll see some little piece of myrtle. Look hard to your left. Right. Little piece of wax myrtle. Flip, let me ask you something. What, uh, I mean, how do you know, how do you find the good spots? Just spend time out here? You know, fish. I wish there was a formula. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But there is consistency to these spots that you find. The good ones are always good, or usually good. And then there's just, for some reason, a lot of beautiful shoreline that's not awfully productive. Glenn, I'll bet you that that raccoon has never seen folks. You think? I bet he has no idea. Ooh, here's a redfish. I better start casting. I can see that right now. I better start casting. Yes, yes. Oh, Glenn, when you're ready for a jig, man. Yeah. Let me know. No, you take all the good spots. It has nothing to do with the jig. I got a box of them. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Are you going to come help me with this or what? No, I'm not going to help you. That is a pretty fit. Well, now at least all my worries about supper are over. Yes. I guess mine are too, huh? 
I'll share. I will share. I thought you would. I will always share with you. I'll tell you, the color on those redfish. I beg your pardon? The color on those redfish are unbelievable. They're so much different than what we see in open water. Oops, got away, there went supper. Got away? Got away, completely got away from me. Huh? Oh yeah, got away from me. From Flip Pallet? Guess we gotta catch another one. Oh, a little snoot, Glenn. The skills and extraordinary knowledge of my friend Flip Pallet will amaze the even the here. best professional angler. I think we're getting into the zone. Glenn, I want to show you something here. Have you ever seen this lift that you can use to paralyze a snook? No. This is the darndest thing. You know how the lower lip will paralyze a bass? Right. Watch this. This is the neatest thing. Just lay them across your hand like that. I'll be darn. They will not move. Is that right? Yeah. Now this guy took the hook so deep he may move. You mean even a big one? The biggest one of all will never move. Watch this now. The whole time he'll just lay there in my hand. I'll be darned. Totally paralyzed. Totally. I mean, they will not move a muscle. I think we're in the zone here. I think something really great's going to happen along this shoreline. Nightfall of the first day catches us at one of the chickies, or camping areas, that the Park Service maintains throughout the backcountry. After a meal of redfish, a campfire, and a good night's sleep, we set out early the next morning, heading deeper into the maze in search of the night heron ponds. Being with Flip here in the Everglades is an experience that will stay with me forever. He enjoys all the smell, the quiet, the entire surroundings with a reverence. His understanding of fish, plants, critters, birds is exceptional. For Flip and me, this was just one of many trips to come of journeys and adventure that would take us to the most remote, exciting wilderness areas across North America. For Glenn and I, it was about high adventure. For the Osprey, it was home improvement. Getting things ready for springtime nesting and the raising of young. This search for the elusive lost passage into the night heron ponds was beginning to provide just what I'd hoped for. A chance for Glenn to visit the world that I've known since early childhood. A chance for him to meet the neighbors, smell the smells, and hear the sounds and the wonderful stillness of the Everglades. I wanted Glenn to pack a lifetime of Everglades into a single week-long trip and experience it all at once. But then I realized how impossible that would be. And so I just relaxed and watched as Glenn soaked it all in, as only he can do. This was beyond my endless imagination to have the opportunity to see so many critters firsthand, up close and personal. I have spent several years photographing wildlife subjects, but never have seen so many in one area. I had determined that I would return back to the park soon with camera equipment in hand to relive this extraordinary experience from the smallest bird to the giant alligator. 
we never did find the night heron ponds. And it didn't really matter. What mattered was the search and where it had taken us. The night heron ponds are still there, somewhere, and we'll find them another time. What we did find was a chance for Glenn to get a close-up look at the subtleties of this place, and the chance to follow the flow of sweet water to its meeting with the salt at the Gulf of Mexico. As Flip pulled the boat out into the Gulf shoreline, I couldn't help but think about the remote places that we had been in the last few days and where we were headed. I couldn't help but think about the people who first came here to pioneer this vast wilderness and the obstacles that they had to overcome. I began to realize how lucky we are that this vast treasure belongs to us, all of us, and is in the good care and hands of our National Park Service. Otherwise, the horizon would be dotted with condominiums and fast food joints. Also, the thought about seeing an American crocodile and the fact that there is still over a million acres of the Everglades that I haven't seen. Also, my thoughts about my friend Flip Pallet, who's been coming here for a lifetime. He doesn't just come here. He is as much a part of the Everglades as any other living thing. My friend Flip Pallet knows all about the plants and animals of the glades. All the fishes and all the birds. Oh, those beautiful birds. The spoonbill has to move his bill side to side as he feeds on small crustaceans. Whenever we looked across the shallow flats, the birds were going about their daily routine, playing their part in the Everglades scheme of things. Most of them very serious and very focused, very intense. When the tide recedes, many of the North American water birds will concentrate in the shallow ponds of water throughout the southern shoreline of the park. Among the busiest are the shorebirds. The young gray flamingos seem to be preoccupied, preening and scratching. A group of white pelicans sift food through their beaks. Once the birds have had all they want to eat, the grooming, bathing, scratching starts, often portraying an unusual image. On occasion, we got to see a clown, seemingly glad just to be part of the game. A perfect week of beauty and solitude was coming to a close. Many fish and wonderful experiences. This trip was everything that Flip had promised and a whole lot more. As our passage drew to a close, I was pleased to realize that Glenn had seen and felt it all, just as I had. He'd missed nothing of my world and in the process, he'd made it his own. Quest for Adventure has been brought to you by Ford F-Series, 
the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Bass Pro Shops Catalog. Columbia Sportswear Company. Mako Marine International. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. For additional information, contact our website at www.questforadventure.com.